Hello, guys. Um, in this video, I'm going to start talking about a, a new idea in physics, which is rotation, which is basically when things are rolling and uh, spinning. Uh, up to this point here, we, we haven't mentioned the rotation. So when we had a marble rolling down a track or a ball running down a ramp, uh, we never talked about the, uh, the rotation. Everything was a translation. Everything was just kind of like sliding, which is not true. Things were moving down the ramp, but they were rolling as they were, were moving down the ramp. So we have to talk about this idea of, um, of rotation, right? So there is a lot of analogy between linear motion and uh, rotational motion uh, or angular motion. So the angular distance is null. Actually, let me do some examples here before we, before we talk, OK? All right, so I have this uh, bicycle wheel, and it has like two tapes. It has um, a red one up here, and it has a blue one down there, right? And I'm going to spin this, right? Okay? And the question is, well, which tape is moving faster, right? So there are two ways, two answers to this, okay? If I ask you which one has a greater linear velocity, meaning which one covers more distance in the same amount of time, okay? That's one question. But the other question would be which one covers more of an angle in the same amount of time, okay? And I think you can see clearly that the red one is faster than the blue one. You're probably looking at the red one. It's pretty much a blur in the video, but the blue one you can probably see clearly. And the reason for that is because the red one, the red one has to cover a bigger circumference. It has to cover almost the outside of the, uh, of the wheel. The blue one has to cover a smaller circle around this axis of rotation. So the axis of rotation is basically along this handle. It's coming at you and it's coming at me. A lot of times this axis of rotation is not visible. It's uh, virtual. So here we can say that the red piece of tape is traveling faster than the blue one because it covers a bigger distance. So that's the old linear velo uh, vel velocity or speed. Now we have to define a new speed that has to do with rotation. And I think you can probably see that both of these tapes, they cover the same angle in the same amount of time. There is no way that they can cover different angles, okay, because they are both fixed to this uh, bicycle wheel. So the new definition of distance or angular distance is just going to be basically the angle, how you change your angle. And that has to be in radians. Okay. Angular velocity is angular distance over time. Now, that's the average. Okay. So omega with the bar over it, it just means that it's the average angular speed. Okay, and I'll talk about the, uh, the vector nature of, uh, of angular velocity. So velocity, average velocity was distance or change in position over time. This is the change of the angle over the time. It's the same thing. Okay. Uh, what else I want to talk about? <laughs> okay, so uh, let me talk about the, the vector nature of, uh, of angular velocity. Okay, so I'm going to spin this wheel towards the F wing, right? Like that. Okay, the way you would find the vector, the direction of the, uh, the angular velocity, you take your four fingers, right? And they're going to follow the direction of travel. In other words, the direction that the wheel is spinning. And your thumb will be pointing in the direction of angular velocity. So it's just like this. So if I do this, my four fingers will go in that direction. My thumb is pointing towards me. So the angular velocity is coming at me. Okay. If I go the other way, I just have to turn around and my four fingers will follow the direction of rotation. And now my thumb is coming at you. So the angular velocity is coming at you. So it's along this axis here, the handles and it's coming at you. So it all depends on how 
uh, on how you rotate it, right? And we'll do some examples in class tomorrow when we open and close the door and depending on where the hinges are, the angular velocity will be pointing in different directions. Okay. <clears throat> so I think whatever I talked about just now has to go in, in here in your notes. So you can, uh, you can make your own notes. But for now, we, I'm going to write all the, the, the stuff that I defined. Angular, average angular velocity. That's the average. Okay. <coughs> angular acceleration. Now, we're going to talk about two kinds of acceleration. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to talk about tangential acceleration, and I'm going to talk about radial or centripetal acceleration. Now, the tangential acceleration is just changing velocity over time. <coughs> uh, maybe I can do the analogies later. Yeah, okay. So in the... <coughs> uh, Okay, so the angular acceleration is basically how fast, sorry, how fast your angular speed is changing. Okay, so tangential uh, uh, acceleration is how fast your linear speed is changing. Angular acceleration is how fast your angular speed is changing in time. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the vector nature of the angular acceleration. <coughs> okay. If you recall when we talked about linear speed and, and acceleration, we say that, let's say we're traveling from, from where I'm standing to the back of the room, right? And I'm going, starting slow, or I'm starting from rest, and I'm gonna accelerate. So I'm increasing my speed as I travel towards the back wall. So in this case here, the velocity is towards the back of the room, right? But since I'm picking up speed, I'm accelerating, the acceleration is also towards the back of the room. I think we talked about this in the past. So if you're speeding up, acceleration and velocity are in the same direction. Now let's say I start with a high speed here and I slow down as I go towards the back of the room. So I'm still traveling towards the back of the room, but I'm slowing down. So the acceleration must be towards the front of the room. So remember, when you're slowing down, the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions. We talked about this in the past. So let's try that here. Now, if this bicycle wheel, okay, is going at a constant speed, right, there will be no tangential or linear acceleration because your speed is not changing in, in magnitude, right? The velocity is changing direction. That's a different story. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But the speed is not changing magnitude. So there will be no mention of tangential uh, acceleration, right? Now, let's go back to the angular acceleration. So if I spin the bicycle wheel towards the F wing, if I want to find my angular speed, Okay, or angle, the, the angle of velocity. Okay, all right, sorry the uh, computer misbehaved, so I had to fix it. Okay, so if I'm spinning this bicycle wheel towards the F wing, so my four fingers will follow the direction of rotation, my thumb is in the direction of angular velocity. We're done with that. Okay, if it's slowing down, okay, the angular acceleration, just with the, what I explained with the linear stuff, will be pointing towards you. Okay. Now, if I decide to go start slow but speed up, I make this go faster and faster, right? As it's going faster and faster, my angular velocity is still pointing towards me. But since the bicycle wheel is speeding up, okay, it's picking up more an, of an angle per, per unit time, the angular acceleration is pointing towards me. Okay, so that's the vector nature of, uh, of acceleration. Okay, or angular acceleration. Okay, so you can fit that in here under C. Now, when it comes to the units, okay, the for uh, angular speed, okay, it's 
angle over time or the change in the angle. You don't have to always start from zero. So that's going to be radians per second. For tangential acceleration, that's just the old meters per second squared. This is going to be the change in omega, which is radians per second per seconds. <coughs> okay. So basically, this means how fast or how slow you change your angular speed. Okay, so let me make sure I didn't forget anything here. Okay, now let's just look at the relationship between this stuff here. Now, if you look at your uh, lavender sheet, you're going to see your linear stuff. So I don't recall the order, but I think it was like this. Okay, that's one of them. And then we had uh, the other one is uh, VOT plus one half AT square. Then here we had V final square equals the initial square plus two A delta X. And I'm missing one, I'm missing this one. VF equals V O plus AT. Well, the translation is extremely simple. All you have to do is your linear distance now is replaced with your angular distance. Your linear speeds are replaced with your angular speeds. And your linear acceleration is basically replaced with your angular acceleration. So it's, let's see how this translates. So this delta x becomes delta theta. That's your angular distance. The initial angular speed, final angular speed over 2. Now time is time. doesn't care if it's rotation or translation. This is going to be delta theta equals initial angular speed times time plus one half angular acceleration times square. Okay, omega final equals omega initial both square plus two alpha, and this dist linear distance is replaced with linear with the angular distance and omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times t. That's pretty much the translation between the two. Now, we can look at some uh, uh, a relationship between uh, the formulas here. Now, I can say that V is equal to <coughs> delta x over time. Now, if it's, okay, let me just, uh, I'm going to erase this stuff here, and I'm going to move this stuff up higher. Um, okay, so V is delta X over delta T. Now, if we take the bicycle wheel, and if I just take a small portion, and let's say this is my delta X, this is the distance that I travel, and this is the radius. And that can apply to any point, by the way. It could be the blue one here, or it could be the red one there. Okay, so this could be the delta x for the blue one. Let me just do colors and be fancy. Okay. Now, this is the, is the here is the blue r. I guess the other one is, maybe I complicated this. This is the red radius. Okay, so this is going around that circle, and the other one is going around the bigger circle. Now, you guys learned in, um, in math that delta x, okay, or you call it the arc length, is r times this angle here, which is delta theta, okay? So if I do delta x over t, I would get, delta theta over t. So while this is the linear, average linear speed, equals r, average linear velocity. I mean, angular velocity. But this applies to even instantaneous stuff. So we don't need to put that in there. So this is another formula that maybe we should, we should know. Now, let's see if this kind of confirms the fact that the outside point here, the red one, is going faster. Well, both 
points here, both tapes, the, the blue and the red, have the same angular speed. They cover in the same angular distance in equal, equal amounts of time. But the one for the, the red one is further away from the axis of rotation, which is in, the, in this case is coming at you, is going into the board. So the further away from the axis of rotation, the more the linear speed. So that kind of makes sense. I can do the same concept with A tangential, right? So A tangential acceleration equals, maybe I should do that somewhere else, okay. Just in case it doesn't show up in the video. A, A tangential equals change in sp linear speed over time. Well, change in linear speed, now speed is R omega, right? And that's gonna be R change in omega over time, which is basically just r times alpha. You have to know this. These are going to come in handy later when we do uh, rotational dynamics, right? When we start talking about acceleration and some other ideas. Okay, so those formulas are down there. Just keep in mind that this is in meters per second square. This alpha here is in radians per second square. Now, there is another type of acceleration that I think we should mention, I'm gonna talk about here. So let me just write the other equations. V equals R omega, and uh, A tangential is R angular, uh, angular acceleration. Now, in addition to the tangential acceleration, there is, an, uh, there is a centripetal acceleration, or radial acceleration, and the f because the, the, the reason for that is because we change in direction, okay? Now, this centripetal acceleration, you're gonna have no matter what. You're always gonna have it, okay? The tangential acceleration, you, you may or you may not have it. If your speed does not change in magnitude, in other words, if we're going at a constant speed, there's no tangential. But there is definitely a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, centripetal acceleration. Well, centripetal acceleration, if you remember from circular motion, long time ago, right, is V squared over R. Well, V is R omega, so this is gonna be R, R squared omega squared divided by R, so that you're left with R omega squared. I hope you can see that. I'm not doing the algebra. Okay? And so technically, let's look at the, the general case. So let's say the bicycle wheel, this computer keeps uh, shutting down on me, I'm misbehaving. Okay, so, so basically I'm gonna look at the overall acceleration of any point on the, uh, on the bicycle wheel. So you have your tangential acceleration. If you change in speed, the magnitude of the speed is changing, right? You're gonna have that. The centripetal acceleration, you're gonna have no matter what, just the fact that you're change in direction, you're gonna have that centripetal acceleration, right? So if you have both of them, if you change in direction, which you're always gonna have in rotation, and if you're speeding up or slowing down, you're gonna have some tangential acceleration. So the combination of those two, I'm gonna add up these two vectors. So I'm gonna bring this AT here. I'm gonna do the head to tail, okay? And my overall acceleration or the resultant acceleration is that green arrow. And that should do it. Take care. All right, I'm out. Peace.